Welcome to our Sunday online liturgy for the second Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Father Tim, and I am the rector of St. Stephen's Pro Cathedral and the Church of the Holy Cross in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. We are two parishes of the Episcopal Diocese of Bethlehem of the Episcopal Church. We are grateful that you have found us and have joined us for this Sunday liturgy. In addition to this, keep in mind also that there are three in-person Sunday Masses for this Lord's Day in the two parishes of our collaborative ministry. Eight o'clock on Sunday morning. A uh, right one spoken liturgy at St. Stephen's, nine o'clock. A uh, right two spoken liturgy at Holy Cross. And at 1030, a uh, right two sung liturgy at St. Stephen's. You will also note on this YouTube channel that we do extensive daily prayers. And I encourage you to pray with us, not only on the Lord's Day, but every day. Thank you for joining us. Please do post a greeting, share a comment. Let us know that you are here. As we offer our prayers, we ponder the question of this Lord's Day and of the Gospel. How much has God done for us, for you, and for me? Let's begin our prayers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. The psalm for this Lord's Day is a portion of Psalm 22, verses 18 through 27. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held up my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, you say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. 
Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The readings for this Lord's Day are, are pretty powerful. We start off with a passage from Isaiah. I don't want to take a whole long time to focus on what Isaiah has to say here, but it's worth mentioning, it's worth noting. Remember when we're dealing with the prophets, that more times than not, the prophet speaks not for the prophet's own self in the prophet's own name, but the prophet speaks in the name and the stead of God. And this is one of those instances where at some point, finally, it is laid out for us that this is on behalf of God. And it's worth noting this because now this is not the prophet seeking again and again to get the people's attention. No, this is God seeking to get the attention of the people. This is God lamenting. They are not listening. They are not attentive. It's almost more than we can bear to contemplate that, isn't it? Especially if we can then take that and apply it to ourselves. What if we are those ones? What if this is not just someone else? What if this is true not only of a previous generation, but our own? What if this is true not only for the people among whom Isaiah lived so long ago, but what if it's true among the people with whom we live and are called to speak in the name of God? Remember that.
And then we go to Galatians. Ah, uh, if Isaiah was a difficult word, Galatians is one deeply comforting. We have an inheritance. An inheritance that has changed us. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's some different wording of that in various places. I think my favorite is as many as you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And I think that's my favorite because put on to me rather than clothed means it's something more than superficial it's something that takes root even to the core of our being and i also think maybe it makes it a little clearer we have not clothed ourselves in christ but christ has clothed us in himself We are the recipients of grace. And that grace is transforming everything. That grace is making all things new. It continues to do so. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. Do you get the sense, friends, that we could go on and on, well beyond just those examples? The whole point is not, well, you know, these three things are the greatest and exclusive dividers of God's people. Oh, I cannot help but think in our own context, we could add things like there is no longer first world or third world. There is no longer democratic and authoritarian. There is no more democratic and republican. There is no more gay nor straight. Any of the divides that we can think of, Christ has overcome all of them. all of them to bring us unity to make us one that's our inheritance sons and daughters of abraham sons and daughters of god the people of god who are one in God. And then we go to Luke, the gospel. It's an incredible moment. Take note of the fact, by the way, this happens in Gentile territory. Jesus has stepped out of not only Israel, not only Samaria, he has gone to the land of the Gentiles, and here, after getting out of the boat, he encounters this demoniac in the tombs 
this man who is naked, this man who has been shackled and chained, but he continually breaks these restraints. A man who cannot be kept under control. A man who is out of control. A man who has lost his mind. And Jesus heals him. Jesus shows mercy to him. This healing, by the way, is on many levels. He clothes him. He is no longer a man without clothing, a man without honor respect, dignity, a man who can now have a place in society. He restores him to his right mind. He will now be acceptable. He is now someone with whom others can have safe interactions. He restores him to his home. Home, in this sense, is not just a building, not just a structure. It is a place of belonging, a place of family, a place that is the center, the foundation, the base of human living. Jesus gives him much. How much has God done for us? How much has God done for this man? He has done so much, Jesus has, to restore this man, to show mercy. And the difference is incredible. So incredible that when the people who hear from the swineherds what has happened come out there to see this for their own eyes, they are so terrified by the new condition of this man that as much as they were terrified by his wildness before, they are even more terrified now by what has happened and how can this be so much so that they ask Jesus to leave their territory. And the man seeks to go with Jesus. But Jesus sends him home and tells him, go and declare how much God has done for you. This is a rare moment in the Gospels. Let's just admit that. Let's just name that up front. How many other times when Jesus heals does he say anything closely along those lines? This is a unique moment. More times than not, many more times than not, Jesus tells those whom he has healed, go and tell no one. But here Jesus has given this man the freedom in the command to go and tell everyone what God has done for you. And he does it. Only, he does it in a very interesting way. 
he tells others what Jesus has done for him. because what he has received from Jesus, he has an awareness he has received from God. And I want for us to really ponder that. I want for us to ponder that within the struggles of our own context. We need not take long nor discern with great difficulty to realize we are in a challenging time to be church, a very challenging time. And it's happened all pretty quickly. The 19 years that I've been a priest, it has gotten more difficult. It is more difficult now than it was 19 years ago when my priestly ministry began to be a follower of Jesus in our local, national, cultural context. Think about the seat in which you sit in a community of faith. not hard to do that we are called creatures of habit aren't we so we tend to sit in the same spot from that perspective think of recent years recent decades and who is no longer in seats around you how many of those seats are empty Thanks be to God, there are some of those that perhaps have, yes, been emptied, but then been refilled. But there's also a number of them that are just empty. It's a challenging time to be church. So how shall we be church? We actually need to evangelize. We actually need to speak up and share the faith. And we need to do so in a very personal way. Which is a challenge for us because for many of us, I think, that we have been drawn in somehow by people who have told us the story of the gospel as the story of other people. Maybe some that we know or know of, and some who are well removed from our daily experiences from our day and generation. That may have worked at one point, but it is not working now. How do we bring others in in a difficult hour like this? When Jesus sent the man away, he did not tell him to go and tell others what God had done for others. 
He sent him away. Tell others what God had done for him. Are we willing to share the gospel story, the story of God, the story of Jesus in such a way that we tell our story and show our wounds, our vulnerabilities, and our healing? And the difference that has been made in us, in our lives, by the touch and presence of Jesus. If we are, we might just be amazed at how that proclamation is received with the help of Christ. We profess our faith in response to hearing the word of God. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, the baptismal creed of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remember, friends, that as we offer our prayers this morning, you are certainly welcome to add persons to our prayers. In a little while, when you see the prayer list, you will see my email. And you may always send prayer requests to my email. You may also post prayer requests onto the comments on YouTube or Facebook. If you choose to do that, or you choose to email me, either way, please do make it clear what intention we are praying for, healing or repose. And know that those whom you add to our prayers, we will continue to hold not only in our Sunday prayers, but also in our daily prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We pray this day for healing for all who are in need in body, soul, mind, or spirit throughout our world, across our country, and in the communities that we call home. 
we pray for healing for those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for Addie, Adelaide, Alice, Antoinette, Betsy, Bob, Bruce, Brooke, Carlos, Carol B, Carol L, Carol M, Carol S, Kai, Clara, Connie, Curtis, David, Dennis, Don B, Don H, Dorothy, Earl O, Earl W, Ed, Esther, Finnegan, Francis, Fred A, Fred C, Grace, Greg, Jean, Jim B, Jim G, Joanne K, Joanne R, Joe, Joey, Father John, Kara, Karen, Lena, Les, Leonard, Linda, Lindsay, Lisa, Lorraine, Marge, Marie, Mary, Megan, Nancy, Nikki, Oliver, Pat C, Pat D, Patricia, Pauline, Priscilla, Richard, Ricky, Ron, Rose A, Rose G, Ruth, Shane, Sheila, Trish, and Will. We pray for the repose of those who have fallen asleep in death. That they might be numbered among those who rest in the arms of Jesus. We pray especially for the repose of our brothers and sisters, Charlotte Thomas, Donna Klein, Jane Hyrum, Robert Mack, Suzanne Staples, Chris Armando, Don Rusnak, George Sowerby, Irene McKinney, Subdeacon Crosby Sparks, Britton, Marty, Mary, Mary Lou, Michael, and to all whom we love but see no longer. We continue to pray for the repose of our brother Bill Davis, who died a year ago, and our sisters Diane Revisa and Georgina Carson, who died two years ago. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We pray for all others whom God brings to our hearts and minds' attention this morning, this evening, whenever it is that we pray. We pray for the peace of the world. For the well-being of the church. For the blessing of our nation. We pray for those who have been raised up to be leaders in our nation and leaders in the church. We pray for an increase in wisdom compassion, mercy, and servanthood in all of these.
We pray that God would keep us always mindful of the good things that we have received from God. And the good that we can do with all that God has given us. We pray for those whom God brings to our hearts and minds' attention. That perhaps we have not thought about or have not thought about recently. And perhaps we wonder why now. And we lift them to prayer, in prayer to God. We pray for God's mercy and blessing upon us all and upon the whole world. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray. Not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness. But as you know and love us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray for the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That brings our Sunday online liturgy to a close, dear friends. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for praying with us on this Lord's Day. Keep in mind, friends, that we offer daily prayers right here in YouTube and on Facebook every evening at 6.30 from Sunday evening through Friday evening, and every morning at 8.30, Monday morning through Saturday morning. The online liturgy is made available at 5 o'clock on the eve of the Lord's Day weekly. Remember, biblical days, liturgical days begin in the evening, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And our regular Sunday schedule in our collaborative ministry is that each Lord's Day, there are three Masses offered in person. Eight o'clock, spoken right one, the Mass at St. Stephen's. Nine o'clock, spoken right two, Mass at Holy Cross. And 10.30, a sung right two, Mass at St. Stephen's. You are welcome and invited to join us. St. Stephen's is at 35 South Franklin Street in downtown Wilkesbury. 
And Holy Cross is at 373 North Main Street in the north end of Wilkesbury. Thank you for praying with us, and I hope you can join us again soon as we pray together in community, remembering that Christ is indeed among us and ever shall be, that God is our strength and our shield. Present help at all times. Blessings to you and to yours now and always. And know of my love and my prayers and my thanks to God for you and our prayer.